By the powers of truth and light, by the sword of justice bright, make and mend, shift and blend, till nightmare once more stands aright. Hail friends, and well met. Tonight we rediscover Nightmare, a television show that once broadcast many moons ago on the BBC, beamed through a temporal anomaly from a land far away and long ago. Through the eldritch mists of time and magic, brave champions would come from the future, and those with wits and courage enough to delve into the dungeons of deceit and emerge victorious, Glory awaited. For the others, only a gooey, sticky end and a long walk of shame back to their own time. The timeout is ended. Adventure begins again. Now let's see, how best to explain it? Well, first let me introduce Treyguard, the host of Nightmare. Treyguard at your service, with adventure at my fingertips. He's a suave, deep voice, and exceedingly polite dungeon master who speaks at all times like he's giving the opening monologue to Richard III. Now is the time of trial. Now is the winter of our discontent. It may seem like I'm making fun of the guy, but trust me, I'm not. Treyguard is the man. He's got this gray costume, he's always in character, and somehow he manages to sell the cheapest, dumbest hand-drawn effects as if they were mortal threats. Emergency kit behind the shield, Julian! The rest of you, turn your heads from the mirror! The creature in the chamber is a Medusa. If you don't wish to be turned to stone, don't look at it for more than a few seconds at a time! You just know he's bagged all the fair maids in that castle with that leathery tan, that grizzly beard, and he's the only guy I know who can pull off white eyeliner. And as dungeon masters go, I can tell you he's sure as hell better than this guy. <laughs> now you're working together! Anyway, Treyguard has built his stronghold over the ever-shifting Dungeon of Deceit, which changes its layout magically and dramatically every season, I mean, every time cycle. The dungeon is a dangerous place, filled with monsters, pitfalls, Death traps and nefarious wizards. forever. <laughs> so naturally, Treyguard does what any sensible Lord of the Realm would do. He conjures up children from the future and sends them inside, unarmed and blindfolded, to go looking for treasure. Oh yeah, he sends them into certain doom, blindfolded. Everyone who goes inside the dungeon gets a knapsack for food, which maintains their life force as represented by this deteriorating cartoon head. And they're also given the Helmet of Justice, a ridiculous hat with these huge bullhorns that makes it so you can't see anything. You must don the Helmet of Justice. It will blind you to the way ahead, but still allow you to see objects directly beneath. Uh, uh, gee, thanks, Treyguard. The, uh, the Helmet of Blindness is really awesome. Uh, but that's why each player brings three friends along to act as advisors to guide them by radio as they watch from Treyguard's castle by a mystical, scrying, mystic, uh, closed-circuit monitor. The real reason for the blinding helm, of course, is that there isn't really any dungeon. It's all chroma keyed in. The player wouldn't see anything anyway because they're just standing in a huge blue room. But we get to see all the really cool hand-painted backdrops and monsters superimposed on the screen. It's actually a pretty clever concept, and the real test is one of communication between the players. The dungeon is different for each player, but they all share similar rooms. The most common of these is the clue rooms, where the players have to choose two out of three items on a table, but to know which ones to pick, they have to answer three riddles from a nearby living wall monster that asks them riddles. My favorite was Granitas, because I'm immature and he's got a really funny name. I am Granitas of legend. Get it? Granitas? <laughs> My name is not amusing. Nothing about me is amusing. But for me, this is the most entertaining part, because they have to answer the riddles quickly, and I like to test myself. Sometimes the riddles are really insultingly easy, and sometimes they are amazingly hard. Nine goddesses there were in Greece, of music, art, and rhyming piece. Now... Tell me quick and answer true. What name called they this magic crew? I mean, how are they supposed to know that much about Greek mythology? They're just kids. Muses was the truth I saw. Other riddles have a surprising amount to do with Christianity, and one time they asked a bunch of questions about the Hobbit and J.R.R. Tolkien. 
Who was the first hobbit to hold the ring? Well, you see, the answer is probably Bilbo, but on the other hand, you could probably argue that Smeagol was the first one to possess the ring. After all, I mean, didn't he find it in the river? Um, and, and I don't think it was ever really established one way or the other whether or not Smeagol was a hobbit or just one of a hobbit-like race, so I don't know if that counts. No, wait, it was Deagle! Deagle was the one who found the ring in the river, and then Smeagol stole it, so the answer's Deagle, if he was a hobbit! Should I say Bilbo Baggins? Yes, say that, Scott. Bilbo Baggins. No! It's a trap! Truth accepted. Oh, bullshit! Read the book, you stupid wall! It may look easy, but trust me, this dungeon does not screw around, and almost nobody wins. It's like the British equivalent of Ninja Warrior, sort of, only with dragons and uh, riddles instead of exercises. You'd think with kids playing, they'd kind of take it easy on them, but not here. Half the fun is just watching them get destroyed in really creative ways. When you're watching this, you're on the edge of your seat, shouting directions, No, 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 don't, don't, don't go that way! Other times you're sitting there shouting the answer to a riddle and you can't believe they don't know it! So many teams will get so close to the end and then, BAM! Lightning bolt to the fucking head! <laughs> that kid is dead as shit! My favorite part is whenever the player would die, Traegard would just kind of put his hands on his hips, shake his head, and say something like, Oh, Chunky. Ooh, nasty. Ooh, nasty. Ooh, very nasty. Do you like maggots, Douglas? Yeah. Nasty. What's the matter? Don't you like my pie? Uh. Ooh, nasty. <laughs> Ooh, nasty. I think they must choose idiot kids on purpose or something, because even as a kid, you knew you were smarter than these limey little twerps. Everyone who ever watched this hated the kids because you knew you could crush this dungeon and give better directions than any of them. But that's why this show was so good. It made you feel like you were smarter than everyone else. Most teams fell prey to the same problems, which prompted me to make this little pointless survival guide to Nightmare. You know, in case the show ever comes back and you're a contestant or your kid is a contestant. Alright, it's pointless. Shut up. Tip number one, study riddles. I cannot emphasize this enough. Three quarters of the dungeon relies on you acing every riddle you come across. You have to answer all of the wall monster's riddles correctly to know what items to choose off the table, because if you choose wrong, you're as good as dead. You have to get a perfect score against Merlin, or he won't give you the magic you need to survive later on, and you need that or you're dead. My name is Merlin the Magnificent, but my close friends call me Bert. I don't know why Merlin is so keen to let little kids walk right into a dragon's lair without any protective magic just because you couldn't remember the capital of Assyria, but hey, I guess that's Merlin. And usually there's another Riddler on the third level. Again, it's absolutely essential that you ace that round. There is no chance otherwise. Actually, I'm kind of surprised at how unforgiving the game is in this regard. One strike and you're pretty much dog food. Well done! You've made it to level two! Whee! <gasps> Tip number two. Practice giving directions. Every team I've ever seen play can only give directions at 90 degree angles, and some of them even have trouble differentiating left from right. That is just inexcusable. I remember when they started including this particular room that required the dungeoneer to move diagonally forward and to the left, and the concept of diagonal movement just blew the team's minds, because they had no idea how to convey the concept of turning only 45 degrees to the left and jumping forward. Referring to directions in times of a clock face would have saved more than one team, I can tell you that much. Nasty. Tip number three, elect one.